this time I would like to recognize the lady from Benton, Representative Pettengill, for her retirement remarks. I will, I will roll from the table. <laughs> uh, the point is not well taken, Representative Pettengill. <laughs> That was shocking. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, that was great. <laughs> well, uh, I gotta say, I've never been this nervous to speak on the floor. And I'm gonna try to get through it without this box of Kleenex. I got it here. Um, first of all, I want to thank my district. They've given me the honor of my lifetime and uh, to be here and stand up for them. I wanted to stand for a real life and the specialness and unique things that we have in Iowa. And I'm sorry, but you urban people just don't even have a clue of how great it is in rural Iowa. So uh, I promised to stand for them and I've really done my best to do that. And isn't it amazing the roundabout way we all get here? So I certainly didn't aspire to be here and I uh, really just look at people's moral compass to see if I like them or not or if I'm gonna help them or not. And um, this week I was visiting with Representative Landon and heard all about his background. And I thought, well, I really missed the opportunity with people here. Uh, he's really interesting. And all I cared about was his moral compass. So I'm sorry, Representative Landon, but he is really an upstanding guy. and I had all I needed to know about him. Um, I gotta tell you, I've loved every job I ever had. I'm one of those people that wakes up in the morning, and I'm so excited to get on the day, and uh, just love to be productive and do good things for people. I don't know if that's regular or not, but I feel just regular. So, since no one really knows my history, and I've heard from Representative Landon on his, I thought I'd tell you I have a pretty cool uh, job history to be going into retirement with. Uh, in high school, in college, I was a ride operator at Cedar Point Amusement Park. Now, if you don't think that's a cool job, it really was. Um, I had four rides I was responsible for. We had to wear navy blue socks, and I still remember the millions of times I had to say this, keep all hands, feet, fingers, elbows, toes, everything down inside the ride at all times. <laughs> and have a great day at Cedar Point. Um, so I was all about rules even then. <laughs> I know uh, Representative Kaufman loves Cedar Point, so I don't know if he ever knew I worked there. Um, I also worked several jobs at a resort called Sawmill Creek. And I was a maid, a uh, tableside cook. I did the bananas flambés and the cherries jubilees. And man, that job, you got a lot of good tips at that job. Uh, I was worked in the breakfast room and they had, uh, it was shaped like a big bird cage. And we had to dress up, I was a canary. We had uh, parakeets and canaries, and I was pretty cute back then, so it was okay. Um, then, if you were lucky enough to work dinner, because, I mean, this was the resort, you got to dress up like a winch and uh, you made really good tips there too. So I love that job. You really got to meet a lot of people from all over the country and it was great. I also worked in guest services. 
I, you kind of moved your way up there, and they put me in charge of kids' activities. So the people would come, and uh, the parents would want to, you know, do things by themselves. So we had activities for the kids. So I would like plan parties and stuff like that. Well, another one of my jobs was filling in if something happened at one of the parties that somebody didn't, like a lot of people call in sick, you know. So I had this Big Bird come into this party. Well, Big Bird called in sick. So Dawn gets in this little, uh, what well, was a little, big Big Bird outfit. You know, I'm only five foot one, and I'm sure y'all think I'm taller. Um, but the big bird head was like four feet high and sat on my shoulders and you had this little window to look out through feathers and this little kid comes up and he goes you're not big bird and you all know me well I go shut up kid <laughs> so I'm pretty much the same as I was back then. Um, I also was a plain clothes person in a department store. That's the only job I ever got fired from. Uh, the statistics were four out of every ten people were stealing something. So I worked there six weeks and only caught two people. My main thing was walking around with a shopping cart, eating chocolate-covered raisins, and if I happened across somebody that was stealing something, which I only did two times, uh, I turned them in. But I just was not sneaky enough for that job. I also sold women's shoes, and like I said, I loved every job. I would make cookies so the women would really love their shoe buying experience. I sold auto parts. I did not make cookies for that. Uh, did bookkeeping, data entry in a piece goods warehouse, which was great big rolls of fabric coming in to um, uh, Jamar Ruby, which was a division of Hart Schaffner and Marks, and they made men's sands about slacks. I just heard General Vander Linen sigh. You're just going to have to wait this time. Um, <laughs> Um, it, I went to school to be an engineer, and I got out, and I was terrible at it. I made straight A's in school, and uh, I got two C's. One was public speaking, and one was drafting. Other than that, I was the curve breaker and everything. And uh, but I got out, and I was terrible. So I and you know I like to be good at what I'm doing. So I gave up on that engineering and went back to J.M.R. Ruby and Hart Schefter Marks and they asked me to be their trim buyer. So what a trim buyer is, you get these little pieces of fabric from the designers, some patterns, and the price point of this will be $100 slack or $200 jacket or whatever it was. And it would be my job to find all the waistbanding, labeling, zippers, thread, get everything matched up, and uh, all within that price point, cost it out and get it uh, manufactured so the salesman could go out with it. Well, then I got to bring my uh, math skills to the forefront and uh, get all those different pieces to 27 different sewing plants around the country. And that was a cool job. Um, Representative Riser, who is a pilot, I got to fly around on the company jet, which I think is what he's getting ready to go do. And uh, of course, I had a big excitement level about that and was with a bunch of uh, people that were old executives. You know, I was just a kid, really, in my 20s. And uh, they were all kicked back reading their papers and stuff. And I'm like, oh, we have fruit? <laughs> you know, that was, you know, got to have excitement on everything you do. 
But uh, when you're in one of those Queen Airs or King Airs that you fly around on, they really do. The pilots have to roll out this little red carpet for you. It's great. So I'm wondering if Ken's going to do that. Um, anyway, then uh, I got married, and we moved to Iowa, where my husband grew up in LaPorte City. And I really fell in love. My whole life, my uh, parents, my dad worked for Chrysler, and we would get, I was a corporate brat, we would get transferred around, and it was Louisville, Cleveland, you know, Detroit, Indianapolis, places like that. And so when I got to Iowa, I couldn't believe how perfect it was. And the um, respect people had for the earth, and I was clean, and not very much crime, just wonderful. So we drove around trying to find a place to settle, and it was about this time of year, and pulled into Mount Auburn. And 150 people, and the whole town right now probably smells like lilacs because that's the way it was then. And I said, I want to live here. So we went to the playground and there was a lady there with her little boy was three and my son was two. And uh, I go, I love it here. And she said, you do? And I said, yeah, I love it. Oh my gosh, this is per perfection. Well, a couple... Years later, it was on the city council. <laughs> they never talked into it. Um, but I started working at principal when we moved there. We found a good place. And uh, I was approached to run for the council. And I'm like, what? I'm not interested in that. I, have no, I don't even know what a city council person does. And I was a Girl Scout when I was a kid, and that on your honor, you will try to do your duty for God and your country and help other people at all times. That's me. So I said, okay, I'll do it. Well, six years later, I was done being a council member, and they asked me to be the mayor. And I was like, oh, gosh, no. Uh, but then I talked to my husband about it, and he said, yeah, uh, Shouldn't be too much. Well, I started a newspaper. I had tours of the city buildings. I mean, it, nothing that I do is not, you know, it's not low-key. Um, so after that, I really had learned the difference between urban life and rural life, and I knew rural life was superior. And so I decided I was going to run for the legislature. And after 8,000 doors and it seemed like 8,000 pancakes, and Patty Simmons, my campaign manager, who was amazing, a driver, she drove me like a dog, though, I'm not kidding. Um, I was elected to be state representative, and you remember how that is. My family was such a great help, and I was ridiculously naive um, and I'm very shy I don't know if everybody knows that but I'm really shy if you notice I'm not going out with people at night and I hate those receptions I just want to work so there was this pancake breakfast on a Sunday and my son's like mom you've never been to New Hall you need to go to New Hall and go to that pancake breakfast I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel sick. I can't go. All these excuses. But we finally went. And in the middle of town, there was one of those, oh, I don't know, they're sandwich boards, maybe you call them, like this. And it's Central Lutheran Pancake Breakfast that way. So we go down and see a church, pull up. Nick jumps out. He goes up faster than me up the sidewalk into the church and I'm walking up the sidewalk and he's like like that I go what? and he comes running out and he goes this isn't Central Lutheran Church <laughs> so I'm trying to go to pancake breakfast at the wrong place I pretty much tells the story of my service here doesn't it? 
Um, anyway, after lots of work, I was elected. And I uh, asked Patty to be my assistant because she had been such a good campaign manager. And I came to Des Moines, bound and determined to stand up for rural people. And uh, on the first day, my first freshman moment happened. My mom was here from Alabama, and my 16-year-old, he's all proud of me and hugging me every time I turn around, which you know when they're 16 never happens. And so you just want your family to be proud of you and your people too. So I'm trying to get my oath up. My computer wasn't working, and Patty was diligently trying to get it up. Well, about every 15 minutes, she would come up and say, I can't get your computer going. I'm like, okay, keep trying. Go see, find somebody. And uh, the Gazette had this photographer following me around. Well, I was chubby then. Now I'm fat. and I was middle-aged. Now I'm old. And, uh, you know, we just don't like our picture getting taken. But this Gazette guys following me around, which was already nerve-wracking, and uh, taking all these pictures, and it was five minutes till 10, and I thought my oath was going to be on the computer, so I kept telling Patty, you got to get that computer up, I mean, we did all this work, we have to say this oath, <laughs> and uh, so little do I know, and now I know that the Gazette or any of these news people will take your picture at the most embarrassing moment because I was like doing this to the computer and control alt delete everything I could think of and I finally said I don't know like that and those people took my picture and put it on the top fold of the Gazette the next day I'm wanting my people to be all proud of me, and they are first view they get of me is me saying, I don't know. <laughs> now I got approval from the speaker for props, so here you go. My hair was brown, and I was skinnier, and 14 years ago. I have other props too, so I take no point of orders on that. My next freshman moment came when Governor Vilsack had a government reorganization committee. And it was me for the first time. And I was there to like stand up for rural Iowa. And uh, so I got in the room first. And I sat down, if everybody's on any committees with me, they know I sit like close to whoever's talking and I'm always at the table, and as from when I was a kid, I couldn't see very good. But, so I sat in my usual seat, and the room's filling up with uh, TV and everything, and I'm like, oh my gosh, my people are gonna be so proud. And so then Jerry User sat next to me, and I, I knew her, she was amazing, and uh, Every, the room is just packed full, and I'm thinking I'm doing really good things for District 39, it was then. And uh, Governor Vilsack comes in, and he says, I'm telling the press this is a brainstorming group. We don't want you criticizing any of the ideas that people come out with. And uh, the people at the table or who are on the committee we want you to give them a little bit of latitude on their ideas. And I, I was all proud that all of a sudden I'm like, I'm at the table and I'm not on the committee. So that was when I learned, you got to be on the committee to sit at the table. So I shrink down, hoping nobody notices me. And then all of a sudden he says, Ripson and Pettengill, are you on this committee? And I go, no. <laughs> so, yeah, way to go, Dawn. You make your people proud. So, 
So, anyway, over the last 14 years, I've tried to find humor in most situations and experiences, and Senator Dotzer told me that, don't worry, Pettengill will wipe that smile off your face. Well, you haven't. I've seen the worst ugliness in some people here, and I've also, within the same hour, see some beautiful characters and outright heroes. I've loved this work, just like all my other jobs. Whether it was Big Bird, selling shoes, or others, I believe all work should be respected. And I really love using my brain in this phenomenal way. In my district, I've job shadowed government jobs in my district and written columns about them because I wanted them to feel valued. I job shadowed a Braille school teacher, Wilma Porter, the court reporter. That really was her name. A game warden, an airport commissioner, a school cook, livestock inspector, an early child coordinator, state trooper. All of them have difficult jobs. And I want our public servants to know they're needed and show appreciation. Got a little much with the court reporter because, you know, on this job you can kind of tell if somebody's lying or not. So when you knew the person was lying, I'm going like this to so the court reporter. <laughs> you see this? <laughs> uh, she, yeah, they know. Uh, the game warden was on the first day of duck season and people started shooting. It felt like it was at us because we were hiding in the trees and the gay warden says, turn around. And I go, what? You know, I'm not good for taking orders. It's turn around. So I turn around and then I hear all the stuff hitting the leaves on, above us. And I go, aren't people shooting at us? <laughs> he said, no, that's, you know, paranoia of a politician. Then a uh, job show an airport commissioner who had me filling potholes out on the runways with asphalt and forced me to go up in a plane with parachuters. And the worst part of that was the application I had to fill out. They wanted to know how much I weighed. And so I left that blank and handed in the application, and they came back and said, you have to fill that out because we need to know how much weight's on the plane. So I wrote 199 plus sign. And I go, you're not gonna know any more than that, so they let me go through. I also, uh, when I joshed out of the school cook, they gave me the easy job of opening up cans, those great big cans, and I accidentally dumped a whole can of fruit cocktail in the sink. <laughs> it was, it, it's mortifying. I'm so uncoordinated. So, uh, I can't believe I made it this far without crying. I'm doing great. Uh, but, the people here. So many people here made my experience really special. Uh, the ones that, I mean, I've pretty much argued with everybody in this room and we're still family. I love that. It is just like family here. So, but first, I want to thank the people that make the place work. Carmen Bowl, you're wonderful. So organized, and your professionalism is just amazing. Doreen and Chris in the back, and Kelly and payroll, and the bill drafters, and fiscal people on LSA, our doorman, and the bill room. I, I know I'm going to miss somebody, and I'll really be missing you when I'm gone, because you're awesome. But I hope you accept my gratitude. Secondly, I want to thank my legislative assistants. And I've had some really great ones. Uh, Patty Simmons, like I said, she was my campaign manager. She was my first one, man. She was a dynamo. And she did drive me like a dog on everything. Like, she did not take no for an answer. But it took that to get me trained. I'm telling you, I was, I was not obedient. Rachel Thomas, who's with the Democrat staff now, um, 
You did an excellent job for my district. And I really missed you terrible. But I understand. Then uh, Jenny was with me my third year. Jess Renlet, who's with uh, Economic Development now, she was amazing. She's probably the most interesting person you'll ever meet. She does the coolest things, biking around the world, and I mean, she's just wonderful. Then I had Wes Enos, who treated me like I was Michelle Bachman. Like, he worked for Michelle Bachman, and he would do these sign-up sheets for my coffees that looked like it was from her. And I said, I cannot take that to my district. Just give me a pad of paper, name, address, phone number, and email address. So that's what he did. But he, he did his best. He was a great guy. And then uh, Hannah Frost, she was with me for three years, super organized. I got a lot of complaints about her dress. She was a beautiful girl. And there's a lot of jealous people in here. It was ridiculous. Um, Victoria Johnson, uh, she is sure a blessing. She went off. She has a real career now. And then Phil Thompson, who is my assistant this year and last. He, Phil did a phenomenal job, and he treated me like a little gold nugget. Carried my books and everything. He lost his mother several years ago, so... I got adopted him into the Petting Gills, and he's a really good boy. So I'm grateful for those people and their help um, to help me serve Benton and Iowa counties. It's really great. I also want to recognize three assistants who are never mine, but they're sweet as sweet tea. You know, I'm moving to Alabama eventually, so got to get some of those southern things in my in my speech. Uh, Marlene Martins, who is was Peter County's clerk, uh, she supplied me with all of the awesome dishcloths I'll ever want. She also would recognize us for uh, Easter and St. Patrick's Day, and if you were on Commerce or State Government when Peter had that, she always had something there for us, which was so thoughtful. Then Phyllis Toy, who is representative of Heaton's clerk, she has the best disposition ever. I don't know how you got so lucky. She's really a good, good lady. And then Susan Foster, who is Sandy Salmon's assistant, she's just a gift to us all. She has a way of making everyone she's around feel special. And that really is a gift. I, I just love all you ladies and uh, appreciate your cheerfulness and support. Now, like I said, I had the speaker's permission for uh, props. So you may have wondered what these black helicopters are on my desk. Well, in the rules committee especially, you can be a little paranoid about what a department's doing. And I got one of these for every time I proved they really were doing something. So I have two. And because of a blooming and healthy paranoia in a couple of people in the chamber, in my last will and testament here, I want to give one of these to Ross Poshton. And the other one will go to Louis Zumbaugh. Because they... They've had some really good discerning comments in, in caucus this year. Another item in my last will and testament is handing off the honor of points of order. We have all this character maligning and getting off topic on bills, and I felt like I was in charge of that. So the first recipient of a new honor, who's shown a burgeoning talent for the Big L, is Representative Skylar Wheeler. The second is a man who really has a penchant for the Yelp, Representative John Wills. And finally, to my 
surprise my seatmate here, who I don't know how he puts up with me, Representative Bergen. Y'all are in charge of the real 10 next year, so go forth and prosper. <laughs> I've always been on the Commerce Committee and have been assigned to insurance bills for 10 years. And I just want to thank, again, I know I did this week already, Representative Olson, Representative Forbes, and my second, the Honorable John Landon. And a special thank you to Peter County for trusting me with that responsibility. In 2011, I was assigned to chair the Administrative Rules Committee by Speaker Paulson and Leader Upmeyer at that time. And I was madder than a wet hen about it because I wanted to chair state government. I wanted to get at that licensing problem that we have in the state and get it in check. So it would be great if I, if you could have heard the conversation I had with Speaker Paulson on the phone. It went something like this. You gave my committee to a freshman? <laughs> and I never even heard of administrative rules. He talked me off the roof and said just to try it. And they thought I'd be perfect for it. And I said, whatever. So that freshman, though, that happened, happened to be Representative Vanderlinen, who was a general, after all. <laughs> so, you know, I guess I, I conceded. But I absolutely love the Administrative Rules Committee. And isn't it great when you have leaders that can see your potential and what you would be good at, right? Thank you very much for that. We do need a class on administrative rules, though, and I'm just speaking for the members of the committee because people don't know what it, I mean, it is a big chore and we do need your help. Representative Rick Olson has been on the committee as long as I have, and he is a complete joy to work with. He's always fair, balanced, and discerning, which is exactly what we need on that committee. Not to mention his great attitude and humor and we can raise each other. He came in with me and I just really love him and Brenda. Representative Vanderlinen is one of my committee members and he cleans up my loose ends when he needs to. He's always supporting and knows how to cut to the chase. I really love that too. For some reason, he really gets me. I don't know how. He's probably the only person. And knows how to challenge me to be the best I could be. And letting the general down is not something that's in my DNA. So I want to thank you, Guy, for your leadership and friendship. Then there's uh, Representative Megan Jones is on my committee. And Megan, thank you for your friendship and diligence, and you're just completely fearless, which I love. One of the best times we ever had was you and I making a surprise visit to the Department of Public Health to see if they were actually working. <laughs> that, was, that was great. Oh, you're so much fun and so dedicated to what is right, and it's hard, hard to believe a young person has such a good moral compass already. And that honey badger on your desk is really appropriate. To you, I bequeath the pet gill you're full of prunes stick, otherwise known as the something else, if I'll tell you later, stick that keeps the bureaucrats in line. That's a stick when somebody's crossed you and then they have the temerity to, an hour later, to come and ask you for something. So, Megan, I've got a clean one just for you, although I did put a couple names on it last night. <laughs> and I want to thank the Republican Caucus staff for your help on rules. I know it's a lot, and I hound you all you know, during the month. But Amanda, you do such a good job, and thank you very much. Representative Masher, is she in here? Well, I'm sorry. I want to thank her for her leadership on state p pension issues. We've been arm in arm. 
and she's got some really good allies in our caucus regarding pension. Representative Kaufman is a really good one, and Representative Hypeville. Well, I still have a big smile on my face because that's who I am, but there have been some trying times while I've been here too. Personally, my oldest son had cancer. He had nine months of chemo and five surgeries. It was a six year long, um, terrible process. My mom uh, had kidney cancer. My marriage ended. And there were times that I had to have protection in order to vote how I wanted to vote. During that time, Representative Horbach, Grant, Strike, Winchettle, and Senator Schultz protected me and made sure I walked the halls and got to my car without any problems. They made sure I could vote my district in conscience and make my way to a caucus that operates completely differently. And I'm very thankful to you. Don't have any great regrets. Christopher Rance was a speaker when I started, and I want to thank him for the book Atlas Shrugged. Really changed my life. And no offense to anyone here or that I've served with, but I really believe he was the best debater in my 14 years. Then I'm winding up, guy. You doing okay? <laughs> I haven't heard, haven't heard any sign, so it was good. Um, we had some really good people out in the lobby. They're very honest and uh, stand for the right things. Um, I want to thank some of them. Uh, Mark Beltram, he's an excellent problem solver and has always been there to help me through, like we get into some if you'd ever do insurance, they're the worst wordsmithers ever. Like one word will drive them crazy and take you through an entire session. Kelly Paschke, I could call her in the middle of the night to check on something and she will do it. She, both of you are ultra ethical and I count both of you as friends. Most of the people in the rotunda are really good. Sharon Presno, Scott Newhart, Edelman, who we've had a few falling outs, and I said, just check your clients with me before you get them. <laughs> that didn't work out very good, but he's done pretty good since then. Uh, Sandy Conlon, Maggie Fitzgerald, Jen Kinglin, Mike St. Clair, Doug Strike, who used to be a representative, he's so skilled. I could go on and on, but I just want to say keep fighting hard for your clients. And, you know, you just think you love people and you just can't love one more person. But the cool thing about your heart, it just keeps expanding the more people you love. And I just have a lot of love and respect for my leadership team. All of them are pretty wonderful. Representative Sexton's my quadrant leader, and he's sure got his hands full with me. He'll say, be here at 8.30, and I go, I'll be here at 9. <laughs> Representative Nunn, Klein, and Wills, you're all great. Leader Hagenow, thank you for your principled leadership. Speaker Upmeyer, I really love you. I'm so proud of the work we have been able to accomplish. And... BFFs. I have two things in my office that I re refer to all the time and I'll leave you with. The first is a post that says, just be worthy. And that's what I've tried to do. It's a huge responsibility that lands on your shoulders as soon as you swear in and I'll be happy to take it off to tell you the truth. The second is from a group called Inspire Your People and it's inspired me. It's been on my refrigerator and every desk I have. And it says, love your people, those you lead and those you serve. Contribute, do your work. Be kind, have respect and concern for others. Be patient, 
have a soothing and relaxed presence. I can't believe no one laughed at that. I have a lot of work to go on that one. Be honest, tell the truth. A lot of times it really is painful. Uh, encourage, help people by giving them your confidence and support. Apologize, say you're sorry when you make a mistake. Forgive, give others a break you hope they will give you. And thank people, show your gratitude and be real about it. Hold yourself accountable in the same way that you do others. Representative Fry said, I got 99 stories and I can name everyone. Friend and foe, I've appreciated you, learned from you, and I've been really honored to serve with you. But I've been in Iowa with no family for nine years now, and it gets lonesome. It's time to join my mom, who's 82, my sister and her family, my sons and daughter-in-laws, and my granddaughter Elena, who says, Grandma, please call me. Honey, Grandma's coming home. And home's definitely where your heart is. So thank you all. And I ask you not to come up here for a reception line, because I'm leaving the room. I really don't want it. You can hug me later, but thank you very much.